Hello. So I do have a slightly different setup. I got two new bookshelves for Christmas and I'm still trying to play around and see what I want to do with the room. Um, and yes, that is a hamburger. It is also a bank where I keep my spare change. One exciting thing though is right here. I have empty shelves. I'm so excited. I have already ordered books that I'm going to put there. Um, I'm just waiting on them to get here. I'm sure you've also noticed my hair is a completely different color. I, I dyed my hair at the end of 2017 and this is something that I tend to do every year around Christmas time, especially years where I feel like I want to make a lot of changes the next year. It kind of acts as like a catalyst for change. So this year is the most extreme. I went blonde. Other years I've just chopped it all off or one year I even dyed it black, which was a mistake. But this year I went with a lighter color. So we'll see how long it lasts, but for now I'm liking it. So in addition to doing something crazy with my hair, every Christmas I tend to reflect back on the previous year. I know a lot of people do this around New Year's Eve, but I always do it at Christmas. Um, I think it's just because there's a lot of downtime and you're just sitting around with your family and it's kind of obvious the big changes. Like it was obvious when I was pregnant that like next year we're gonna have a baby at Christmas. Um, so I always take that time to think about what I've done and what I want to do in the upcoming year. I didn't really make any resolutions this year because I didn't, I don't want to say I didn't want to fail, but I didn't want to push myself too hard to the point where I end the year disappointed with myself. And so I, I focused more on small things that I could do throughout the year to get me closer to the goals that I have for myself like long term. And one of those goals is to write every day. I started back writing every day after NaNoWriMo in December. I set myself a little goal and most days I've done pretty well. It caused me to make a list of how I can fit writing into my day because I think a lot of the times I come up with excuses for why I can't write that day and then I end up disappointed that I didn't write. And so I'm tired of excuses. I'm just gonna fit it in. And here are five things that I came up with, um, mainly for myself, but I decided they were pretty general so I would share them with everyone. But these are five ways that I'm going to fit writing into my life in 2018. The first thing you have to do is figure out what time of day works best for you. A lot of people say you need to get up and write in the morning, you know, like get things done early. But for me, that's not possible. First of all, I'm not a morning person, so I wake up when my son wakes up and there's not a ton of time to write in the morning. So for me, 99% of the time, if I'm gonna write, I'm going to write at night after my son falls asleep. And that's what's been working for me, so that's what I'll continue doing until he's older and, you know, requires less maintenance. I would love to be able to wake up, have coffee, write, but it's not realistic right now. As I'm sure most of you understand, like if you have full-time jobs, it's just not realistic to get a ton of writing done in the morning. Basically, everyone has a different schedule and everyone has different preferences and everyone functions better at different times of the day. You just have to figure out what works best for you. And if you are like me and you're more of a night person, you just kind of have to remind yourself, I'm gonna get it done tonight. If I try to write right now, it's not gonna work. And don't beat yourself up over it because there's no reason to. I've done it plenty and I just kind of said to myself, you have to stop. You have to stop beating yourself up. You literally would not get much done right now. You'll get stuff done later and you can be happy about it then. The second way I'm going to fit writing in is through making realistic goals that aren't going to overwhelm me. This is the idea that I have for when I write another novel. I'm going to take it and separate it into three parts. You could do the three act structure if you want. And I'm going to assign a word count to each part. Obviously this might change, but if you want to have around a 100,000 word book, then you can do 33,000 word chunks. Then in Scribner, I'm going to create a document for each part. So each part's word goal will be 33,000 words which seems a lot more manageable than 100,000 words. Beyond that, I'm going to make a daily goal. So I'm gonna say, 
I want to finish part one of the novel by this date. I'm going to write a certain number of words a day. You want to make your daily goal manageable, but not low enough where you're not actually making progress. So my goal starting out when I was writing every day in December was a thousand and I was usually getting around 1500 and that made me so happy because if I would have made the NaNoWriMo goal like 1667 words, I would have been disappointed with that 1500. But since my goal was a thousand, I was excited about it. So it's all about perspective. And again, talking about manageable goals, if you're not ready for a novel, which I wasn't for years, focus on little things you could write every day. You could write poetry or short stories or even just journal, anything to keep you writing. Number three is to find creative times to get writing in. One of the things that works best for me is planning throughout the day whenever I have a spare second and then at night writing. Because if I start writing at like 10 o'clock and I don't know what I'm going to write and I'm tired and I just wanna sit down and watch Netflix, I'm not gonna get a lot done. But if I've taken the day to think about what I'm gonna write, sketch out a scene, um, write down some goals, then I'm much more likely to get it done that night because I already have a little bit of what I wanna do. And it's easy to fit that in throughout the day. I might not be able to sit down and write a ton while my son is napping, but I can definitely jot down a few ideas. If your job allows for it, you can even fit it into your schedule. When I taught high school, I wrote with my students almost every day. It's gotten harder over the years to fit in creative writing, but I would find ways and I would always write with them. And it was so much fun and such a great experience sharing my love for creative writing. Someone I know, he writes down whenever the mood strikes him he writes down like a quick five minute poem and then posts it to instagram i love the idea because it's usually like a glimpse into what he's doing or what he's surrounded by or what he's thinking about and i just think that's a really cool concept and a really great way to fit writing into your day and really short chunks of time and everyone says this but i want to reiterate it because i believe it's true the best ideas are always scribbled on the back of napkins or the back of envelopes in like a fit of passion those are always the best ideas and so make sure that you're jotting them down even if it's on like your arm make sure that you're writing your ideas down and saving them Number four, keep a log of your progress. Something I decided in December was that I'm going to keep an accurate log of my progress even if I write zero words that day. I'm not gonna give up. Even if I don't write for a week, I'm gonna put zeros for all of those days and then get back to it. And then maybe in the future, I will want to avoid all those zeros so I'm not disappointed. Not only has this kept me accountable, it also helps me see and recognize how much I've been working, which is nice. And then number five is a pretty general one that you can apply to most things in your life. Focus on growth. Basically what I'm saying is that you're never going to reach your goals if you're constantly comparing yourself to the progress and careers of others. You don't know how much work went into writing and finding an editor or a publisher or an agent. Um, it's it's really hard to tell and you don't know what kind of lives they led. All you can really do is focus on yourself and your journey and how you've improved as a writer. And it took me years to get to that point. I still vividly remember trying to write when I was in college and just feeling so frustrated because I was constantly comparing myself to the books that I loved. And you can't do that. I wish I just would have understood back then that everything I was writing was making me a better author and that it was gonna take years and that's a long time especially to a 20 year old but here I am now I'm 29 years old I'm gonna be 30 this year oh my god um but I'm 29 years old and I've spent the majority of the past nine years writing and becoming a better writer I don't know if I'm quite there yet. I don't want to say that I am a great writer because, you know, who knows, but I definitely 
put time into it. So this year I'm planning on doing a lot of writing, I'm planning on reading more, and I'm planning on posting more. I feel like this past year I've written more than I've ever written in my life. Even though I did not win NaNoWriMo, I still wrote more than I've ever written. I attribute that in part to YouTube because I feel like putting myself out there and putting my goals and dreams out there made me want to follow through with them even more. And so I really need to step up my game and start posting more. I hope you guys are having great January so far. If you would like to follow me on Instagram, I made an Instagram for this channel kind of, and I'm planning on posting more. So I'll leave that link below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you again next time.